Hey everyone, welcome back to Hero Hero Go Show, uh, yet another bonus episode, which is really just the episodes now, of uh, my continuing journey through the Whispering Corridor series with the only person with whom I can whisper in a corridor, and that of course is Richard Glenn Schmidt. Whisper, 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 whisper. <laughs> well done. I was on, I was in keeping with the theme. <laughs> yes, the, and later we will be making... Uh, both broken promises and blood pledges. So we have come to the end of the road, uh, the end of the corridor, and this is 2009's A Blood Pledge, Broken Promise, a.k.a. Yogo Godem 5, Dong Ban Ja Sol. Uh, wow. Yeah, you're welcome. This is directed by Jong Yong Lee, who uh, only directed this. This is his only feature, which seems weird to me. Because they, of all the problems this movie has, I don't think the direction is one of them. Uh, I think this is a pretty beautiful film, actually. No, he's a, he's a solid storyteller. If uh, if maybe he just needs to like, I don't know, turn the brightness up a little bit. A little bit that might not be that might not be his direction though. And he <laughs> and he loves the Jesus. Um, Who doesn't? Uh, you know, it's a good point. Uh, so a couple of actors of note here, the, the girl who plays, uh, Un Young, who, who is kind of the short haired girl of the trio, the one who, whose father likes to bounce her around. Oh. Um, she is played by Min Jong Song and was in a movie called Loner, which I haven't seen. That sounds pretty interesting though. Uh, the, it sounds a little bit almost like room kind of, uh, Ooh. but, but. But a little before that, about somebody who kind of isolates themselves and might be going crazy. Anyway, it seems interesting. Then we have Yonso Oh, who is Eugen, the the mean girl of the film. Uh, she wasn't in any other horror films, but she was in a TV show called Please Come Back, Mister. And <laughs> that is a, a television show based around the idea that this guy dies and and then comes back and inherit inhabits the body of a more handsome guy. <laughs> uh, so basically, my life story. Yeah. If you, why are you harboring a spirit that was uglier in a past life? No, I'm gonna die and and find a hot bod. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we we should be so lucky. Uh, that's. <laughs> Rian Hot Nation. Hey, uh, let's do it. Then there's Shin A Yu, who is uh, Jung On. She was the younger sister in this. Uh, she was in Death Bell, which is oh, yeah. yeah, which is a biggie. And then you have uh, <laughs> this is another one that's not necessarily significant, but I couldn't help but bring it up. Uh, the guy who plays Gyo, who is the uh, sort of the love interest who's in it for about two minutes. Uh, that's uh, uh, played by an actor named Min Choi. And he was in a show called Vampire Prosecutor, <laughs> which sounds fucking amazing. <laughs> and it's exactly oh, what it sounds like. When I read the description of the show, it is about a guy who becomes a prosecutor who becomes a vampire and uses his vampire, vampire powers to solve crimes. And how that show has not made its way to America yet, I, I don't know. He uses his vamp powers? Yes. His his vampiriciousness to uh, solve crime. So he's a good vampire, I suppose. Yes. Which, it, the reason I want to see this is I want to see him, like, it, it, does every episode end with him just drinking the blood of the bad guy? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, things to consider. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Law and Order Vampire Edition uh, impression. Or the porn version of Law and Order. <laughs> yeah, that, also that. Ends with slurping. Uh, just tap me on the head. <laughs> <laughs> so to get into this movie, we'll traipse our way through the film here. Uh, which is, begins in a chapel where our three characters, Eugen, Eun Young, and So He, are all vowing that they're going to die together that night. 
and they cut their hands and put blood on the piece of paper that I presume says, hey, we're all going to jump off the roof tonight. And then we get a banging at the door of the chapel. And that is kind of our cold open to this film. Well, it actually, not even that. We, we still have more before we get to the title because then we get to the sister uh, walking alone at night, the sister of Unju, who we'll get to here in a second. And she is texting the the villain of the film, so to speak, Unju, and is like, hey, where are you? And as she's texting, a body just falls on the pavement in front of her and a glow stick rolls away to kind of reveal her face a little bit. Yeah. She blinks and then is fucking dead. Oh man. Another rave incident. (laughs) That's my first thought was (laughs) this is a rave gone bad. (laughs) Rooftop rave. (laughs) Uh, like you have in South Korean chapels. Yeah. This opening man, it's good stuff. I love it. Yeah. It's here's what I really dig about this movie a lot. And it's very moody and atmospheric. And that starts right from jump with like all these lit candles around the statue of the Virgin Mary. And um, even uh, the knife that they use to cut their hands has a little cross dangling from it and stuff. A lot of like uh, Christian iconography all through this. And plus you get somebody jumping off the fucking roof in the first three minutes of this movie. Yeah, I'm somehow I'm surprised that we've gotten through five films without any religion at all. I mean... It's it's just ripe for uh, for like ex- exploitation, if you will, for this kind of subject matter. This is so good. Yeah, and I guess we're kind of trading lesbian overtones for the religious overtones in a dramatic shift. There's there's not. I mean, if you're really reaching, you could kind of argue that there's a suggestion of a le- lesbian relationship. But that's pretty thin. Yeah. It's, again, one of the first times in any of these movies where the the underlying question of the film isn't, are they doing it? <laughs> so the girls that we saw making this blood, blood pledge uh, earlier are being questioned by the authorities of this school. And Unju is the, the girl who died. And as... They're being questioned. We discover that so he, who is, I would argue, the cutest of them, was friends with Unju. And they're asking so he, like, hey, did Unju ever seem suicidal? And we also learn that the the three the trio of girls who made this blood pledge, um, their story is we were in the bathroom the whole time. Like <laughs> 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 Eugene was taking a shit. So he was doing whatever she was doing. Unyoung was probably <laughs> touching up her makeup, like trying to cover up another bruise. Uh, yeah, but it was it was a Salisbury steak day at the cafeteria, and everybody was feeling it. <laughs> right, we had, <gasps> had a little unju of our own to take care of, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. And then speaking of bathroom, so he immediately runs. Uh, to a bathroom where she has a breakdown in one of the stalls, just starts weeping after all this questioning. And she is cleaning herself up in the bathroom sink. And there we get our first look at Unju as a bloody ghost uh, behind her, kind of reaching for her. But it's a real blink and you miss it. Like, she disappears real fast. But we do have a bloody ghost uh, in the film, which is certainly Whispering Corridors. On brand. Yeah, not since voice has a, a ghost been this unpleasant. Um, fortunately, that was the last movie. So so he is going back to class, and all the classmates are like, hey, was it your fault that your friend killed herself? And it turns out that Unju, uh, they, they say like, oh, she was different this year. She wasn't the same Unju we all knew. And so he is immediate the the whole movie. So he's about to give up the ghost pun, not intended (laughs) where she's about to spill it to whoever wants to listen. And you, Jen shows up just in time to be like, shut your fucking mouth. Tell those little bitches to study English and mind their own business. 
And then all the girls in this class are like, you two are nerds. And then they leave. Yeah, this this goes from like zero to 60 bitch session. Like, like just gossip, 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 craziness, super tense. And this like melodramatic thing. Like this one feels even more like a TV movie than the others in terms of like the way the, the, the non-essential characters are acting. I feel like this is like uh, an excerpt from whispering corridors, the actual TV series when some of these bitchy girls really get going. It cracks me up. Yeah. And for a movie that is not 90 minutes long, not including the credits, there is a fair amount of these girls just, (laughs) you know, like speculating about what yeah. happened to Unju. And I mean, that's in fairness, <laughs> that's kind of the mystery of the movie, right? Is what happened on that roof. Yes. But th- then, so our, our trio of girls go to lunch as you do. And we see that Unju's sister, uh, who is a uh, Jong Un, she shows up and is like, Hey, so he, you you dumped my sister to hang out with your new friends, and this is all your fucking fault. And Eugene, who is the real mean girl, she uh, kind of plays defender of Sohi here, and even just fucking smacks this little girl <laughs> for her troubles. <laughs> oh my god! And tells Sohi like you, she is beneath you. Don't even worry about this trifling little bitch. And I love the younger sister, Jung Yun. The, this, this actress is so great in this movie. Because we saw her at the beginning, and I figured she was just the witness to this death. I didn't immediately connect until this moment that, oh, that was her sister, duh. Yeah. But I, this actress, there's something about her. She's got like a, a presence that's just really cool. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's quite good in this. And like I said, you know, the year before, she was in Death Bell, so... Hey. Put her in a classroom and scary shit's going to happen, apparently. <laughs> I think she's the problem. Yeah. It's not Every, the bell. It's it's not the bell or the roof glow stick stuff. <laughs> and so, so he, again, the sort of our heroine of the film, but she is now hiding in the library amongst the stacks. And Eugene finds her and she's like, what are you doing up here? Like, we don't need to draw unnecessary attention to the fact that, you know, we may or may not have had something to do with this girl's suicide. And so he is like, look over there. That's the window where we told Unju about our plans. We should have died with Unju, she says. And Eugene is just like, all right, I got to I got to carry yet another person on my back through this movie. (laughs) <laughs> and so she i guess they go to like the class uh or the school nurse i think is where this happens where they take her to this room where there's the cot in the humidifier yeah this was a moment where i was like oh th- they took her home because that's way way elaborate for the nurse's office yeah but maybe that's just how it rolls in south korea you know the religious girls schools have the nice the nice room <laughs> right where essential oils are being pumped into the air as you just get a nap <laughs> when you need it we've and, been indoctrinated into the uh the heathen schools for the first four movies mm-hmm. now we found the jesus right finally some facilities worth uh worth talking about <laughs> and whispering facilities uh uh-huh. whispering nurses office uh meow <laughs> there should be sexy nurses in these movies uh just I, random just there uh-huh. like in every anime there's always the sexy doctor right uh uh-huh. and there's occasionally a sick nurse which oh. is always welcome oh man sick nurses is a fucking good movie what a wonderful film uh-huh Come for the discussion of Blood Pledge. Stay for the recommendations of <laughs> sexy evil nurse movies. Yay. Eugen is like, hey, get some rest. When you wake up, you're going to feel better. Only instead of feeling better, so he is dreaming of Unju falling. 
and being all bloody as her uh, her sister hangs on to her and she wakes up just gasping. Things don't get any better for Sohi because she goes to the memorial for Anju. But as soon as she gets there, she's like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Which, yeah, she doesn't put the fun in funeral. In fairness, I have that reaction to every funeral I've ever been to where I'm just like, oh, this is a real bummer. How about we get out of here? <laughs> This is not my scene, man. Yeah. I'm one of those peppy people. I'm just looking for a good time. <laughs> so, <laughs> Anju, uh, her sister, is like, hey, where have you been? Like, this is the memorial for your supposed best friend. And also, I know that Anju was waiting for you at this memorial. The spirit of Anju was waiting. And then starts pressing her about, like, I know you also that you know some shit about her suicide that you're not telling anybody. And so he immediately bails. She's just like, hype, and then runs. <laughs> As she leaves, we see Eugen is at the memorial also, and she's just watching the whole scene, scene unfold. Like She's like, oh, God, so he's going to be a real problem, isn't she? And spoilers, so he's going to be a real problem. They're all a problem. Yes, Eugen is the only one... like spoilers her scheme to get this stupid key is completely undone by the people she surrounds herself with and you can argue that hey maybe she shouldn't have murdered people for a key but eh. let's talk about this key shall we it's the key to the chapel it, it's the master key to the school or something i think it's more metaphorical not i mean the key is a real key but i, I don't think it really <laughs> opens shit it I, opens the door to heaven. Yeah, it's it is the key that you get to carry around if you are kind of top of the class, which Eugene mm. was, and then she wasn't because Anju unseated her, and then so he did as well. And the like, there's a conversation that Eugene has with this mother superior or whatever. Where the mother superior is like, hey, we let you keep the key, even though th you're stupid now. <laughs> and But what did you do with this second chance that we gave you? Not shit. That's what you did. You didn't rise in the ranks. In fact, you <laughs> fell in, in the rankings of students. So give me that fucking key back. You had your chance and you blew it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a real mess, and the whole again slight spoilers for the movie we're discussing. The whole thrust of this movie is predicated on the idea that Eugene is pissed that there are people smarter than her in her class. Hmm. I mean, if I'd had that kind of anger as a kid, I mean, like we had a class of like I don't know, like seven hundred people, something like that. Almost all of them were smarter than me. And they're all dead now because of you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> because we all took a blood pledge <laughs> and 699 people jumped off that roof that day, leaving only me. I was a valedictorian. We heard it. <laughs> we heard it down here. Like, what the hell are they doing? Yeah. The icky thump. <laughs> <laughs> that was my nickname in high school, actually. Mm, it's my nickname now. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, but yeah, so, so he ends up going to this taped off area where Unju died and then has a flashback because I don't know, I saw 30% of this movie is flashbacks where, uh, they have a conversation about like, oh, we've got different classes, but we're always going to be together because we're friends. And Unju gives so he her MP3 player, which she says means that they'll always be together, which I read as. This Zoom sucks. How about you take it? I love how it can record, too. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. But this is the first time where so he is like, you know, if we could die at the same time, maybe we could be together forever. And starts, like, getting poetic about it. Like, imagine if all of this was the ocean. And the shot ends with them, like, holding hands. And it's a, an over-the-back shot of them sitting on the ledge of this roof. And we see below, like, oh, that's where Unju actually landed. And she's about to, so he is about to, like, creep under the police tape to get closer to the spot. And I'm not sure why, 
other than she just feels this tremendous guilt over what's happened and just w- wants to be there to wallow in the bloody stain or something. And her sister, Unju's sister, pops out of nowhere and is like, hey, get out of there. Then we get uh, a glimpse of somebody on the roof, like the ghost of Unju watching from above, uh, judging, telling him like, hey, uh, get away from that police tape. And then, <laughs> and then in class, so he has this vision of her hand that she cut for this blood pledge, just covered in blood and spurting, which is pretty cool. It's, yes. It's not that different from the old Dan Aykroyd, Julia Child bit. Oh, my God. Where she's like, oh, I've cut the dickens out of myself. Classic. Yeah. And then the teacher calls her out and is like, hey, so he, what's wrong with you? And then it turns out that there's no blood there at all. And <laughs> then it turns out that uh, they're, they're starting to spread rumors that Unju was like a loner. And that maybe she was pregnant, and this is why Wait, she committed suicide. You can't be a loner and pregnant. That don't make no sense. You got to get close to people to get pregnant. Well, only one. Can't get loner from a boner, bro. <laughs> and there's there's a great moment here where Un Young, who is the again the short haired girl in the mix, where her classmates are like, "You believe everything Yu Jin says." And you need to stand up for yourself and whatnot. And then Eugen is just hanging out in this classroom until f- somebody finally is like, Eugen, this isn't your class. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I love that part. Oh, the bitchy girl is so good. The, like the leader of all these uh, gossipers is freaking awesome. Yeah. And much like voice, we just have a pack of girls in this movie that are just pissed at everybody. Yep. And I'm for it. I'm pissed. I want to be in that classroom <laughs> just to be yelled at and told to get out. You know, okay. Hey, fat guy, get out of here. This isn't your class. Like, Yo, you kids. Anyway, so rude. <laughs> rude. And then we cut over to the chapel where Un Young is totally ready to crack. She's like, we can't go on with this any longer. And Eugene, who was praying uh, during all of like Un Young, uh, saying that she's about to reveal their their sordid plan, and Eugene is like, "Dummy, we can't tell the police that we lied the first time, and now we're telling the truth." And as she's making the case for this, uh, the candles blow out, uh, which she doesn't seem to notice, but it's you know supernatural stuff is afoot. Richard, break out the theremin, y'all. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, and Eugene says, "Look, if we tell." We're going to get expelled and also have a bad reputation for life. And it isn't just talk, talk, talk. That's a Freddie Johnson reference for you guys. And then Un Young, who actually did notice the candles going out, is like, look, all right, fine. We're in this. We're going to shut up. We're just going to ride this thing out. And Eugene is like, yeah, besides, if Anju was a real friend to Sohi and any of us, She'd understand about us lying about her murder. <laughs> I love that part. I was like, whoa, that's a leap. Yeah, that's a real rationalization. Like, man, you know, Richard committed suicide because we took a pledge that we were both going to commit suicide. And then I didn't. But he's the kind of guy who would understand. Yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool with it. Yeah. Uh, you know why he doesn't care? Because he can't. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the three of them are going are walking home in the dark after this uh chit chat in the chapel um <laughs> where they go uh to the chapel and they're going to get haunted as they're walking home Un Young feels somebody watching him and Eugene is like don't be stupid nobody's watching us and then so he looks back and doesn't see anybody but it is a really cool creepy shot of the campus at night which oh yeah like a lot of this movie is that it's just like oh look at look at how creepy and eerie all of this is which is is partly one of the why i like there's a lot of good shots like that in there but there's also a lot of times where you just get that shot and there's nothing really happening in the shot it's just pretty it's it is it's just pretty uh but in later that night uh, in, in one of the classrooms, we see a figure 
writing a letter to her mom with this glow stick to light it. And it's uh, Un Young who is writing a suicide note of her own saying she's tired of being picked on and yada yada. Then she like starts creeping around this school, presumably I think to get to the roof. Then she goes to a window in the art room and or something and plants this note on the desk with a glow stick and opens this window like, the, Oh, here's a, a, you know, a stormy night that, She's about to leap to her death in in the midst of. But before she can jump, Unju, bloody old Unju, appears right outside the window and knocks her back into the room and kind of closes in on her. And then we get a shot from outside the, the school and, and get a good scream. And it's pretty good. Like, this is the point where it was like, oh, shit's about to happen. Yeah, that scene really confused the hell out of me. Because yeah. this was a copycat girl, or this was one of our trio? I think it's Un Young who okay. who has, like, she's the one who who's kind of suicidal anyway. Oh, okay, I got you. And I think it's, the whole point is that Unju is like, no, 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 not until I say. Ah, it, it helps that uh, glow sticks don't give off a good... 60 to 100 watts of lighting i need to see who a character is <laughs> right <laughs> so but the reason i think that is because the, immediately the next scene is her at home like un young looking despondent ah, okay but her father is not sympathetic to this richard no no and instead is like you're never getting in college like this why i oughta and then he Ooh. just beats the shit out of her. Closed fist, full on, like, ah, like sympathy. Oh, shit, wrong film. <laughs> yeah, oh. but it, it is. It is just a, old a boy. Rocky Three style haymakers. Sympathy for the old boy named Mr. Vengeance, like punching the wall in yeah. rage. Like, it's just, man, it's a beating. It, it is. And... Then we see Eugen. Oh, this is the whole bit with Eugen going to the headmistress with the uh, um, the key. And then when she leaves the headmistress, she passes by a board where we see that Unju's name was at the top of this list. Back in the classroom, our students are like, you know what we ought to do? We ought to go up to the roof and see if it's fucking haunted. And Eugene comes in where she finds Hoon Young now wearing a patch over her eye uh, because of the the beating what she got from her father. It's a good look for her. I mean, not the beating, but the the patch over the eyes looks pretty cool. It's very medical, though. It's like a like the kind of patch you would get if you had like an eye trauma and came out of the hospital. Yeah, that was her dad's brilliant idea. <laughs> Probably. And later there's a great one that's just her chin where apparently she's got a bit of a glass jaw. <laughs> oh. Uh, sorry, Un Young. She asks Eugene, like, hey, can I sleep at your place tonight on account of getting beat up by my dad? And Eugene is just like, ugh, I guess. And then like pauses at the door and asks, like, hey, are you girls going to mass? Uh, like all the the shitty bratty girls in the class. And they're like, mind your own fucking business. We'll go to mass when we go to mass, Eugene. Which again, I love all of these characters. They're going to the black mass later. <laughs> oh, checking out Black Phillip to learn to live deliciously. That's right. They're the, they're the ones haunting the chapel. Oh, if only. I got your Slayer reference from earlier. Mm, I was going to say... They ought to run to the hills, but I think that's... Uh, <laughs> it's the same uh, band. Fuck it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> They're so, caught in a mosh. Yeah. <laughs> so They're for whom the bell tolls. When, when in the mosh pit. Hello, me. Meet the real me. Thrash metal's all the same. I mean... Cowboys from hell. <laughs> kinda? <laughs> uh, oh. You know, the number of people that tried to explain to me how good... Uh, what was that Metallica song uh, like about dentistry? Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it was an instrumental that was like, oh, this is, uh, it, it was called, I, I keep wanting to say it was called Tooth Decay, and I know that's not right. 
for all of my joking about metal, I I don't know the real stuff. All right, bro. <laughs> I've I've got to get to the bottom of this. It was breaking the law. It was pulling the teeth. Of spades. Pulling, oh, pulling teeth is teeth. yeah. That oh, is the name. Yeah. It was bread fan. Uh, was the name of it. Yeah, but it, people would be like, "Oh man, you just w- we put our speaker flat on the floor and play pulling teeth down at the people below us. That'll show them." It's like what? You're, it's got to show them that you guys are assholes. <laughs> You don't get along well with others. Pretty cool. Yeah, you're just an antisocial fuck. All right. It's college. So <laughs> that happened last week. <laughs> Bo, the college years last week. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> Look, I've I've been in this college for seven years. I'm no dummy. <laughs> so so he goes back to Unju's old classroom. And as soon as she get goes in, they're like Oh, so he, you stupid bitch, you don't like you killed her. Like she goes to the desk where people have been leaving flowers and trinkets and shit like that. And nobody in this classroom is having it. They're just like, so he, this is all your fault. Get the fuck out of here. And Eugene is just watching from the doorway. She knows better to, than to wade into these awful girls. So she just watches. So he take the brunt of all this. And later on, is where we get like so he and Un Young overhearing some girls debating like oh well Unju probably killed herself because uh she was pregnant although w- one person forwards the theory that it's because her phone was taken away oh my god it's the best and, and not just that but the way she puts it is somebody took away her phone and she you know how she loved her phone <laughs> oh boy Enough to do a header off of the building, yeah. apparently. Most likely to kill yourself over your phone. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> it. I mean, it's nuts. It is nuts. And then, so he pulls the other two girls outside, and she's like, hey, who started this rumor about Anju being pregnant? And Eun Young is like, I didn't do it. And Eugene is like, who cares? Who? It doesn't matter. Uh, by the way, I probably did it, but it doesn't matter. And she's dead, and that's that. And while they're having this conversation, Un Young thinks she sees Anju hiding behind a bush like ghosts do, where they're just yeah. like mm, peeking out, like, whoop, whoop, can't see me. <laughs> I actually really love that part. That's like, that's like one of those effective moments that's super simple. Super simple. It It is very much so, because like Un Young sees uh, Anju watching them, and as soon as she's like, look at that bush. They turn around and nobody's there, of course, because Un Young has clearly been targeted by Unju to be the first to go. She was the first to shout, look at that bush. And it wasn't about the foliage. <laughs> There's your lesbian overtones. We brought it. Yep, finally. It's not our fault, folks. We were conditioned by the first four movies. <laughs> that is absolutely right. So, so he then is uh, confronted by classmates, uh, the the mean girls of the the school in the hallway, who are like, "Hey, you don't even have to confirm this. We know Anju was preggers, but how did she, or like, how did you know?" And then uh, Jong Un, her sister, uh, Anju's sister, rolls up and says, "Like, you need to come up to the roof where Anju was last alive." And I know you were the last person to see her, you know, before she nosedived off the roof. And so he's like, look, look, if I go up to the roof, this is not going to bring Anju back. And jong Un says, I know. I know my sister can never come back. And then the scene just ends with them all leaving. Like, it seems like it's building to something. And then it's just like, <laughs> nope. Uh, they wrote themselves into a corner and said, well, we'll just fade out. Right. But jung Un does watch as so he is trying to get to the roof, but it turns out it like it's all padlocked and stuff. And uh, jung Un does finally make her way to the roof using, I don't know, a shortcut. And then when she's up there, she's like looking over the edge to, to see where her sister fell. And this bloody hand grabs her and pulls her back. While so he is kind of rushing up the steps to get up there. But again, there's a padlock. She can't, she can't get up. And we see that uh, Young Un 
is listening to the haunted headphones from on and is like, I'm going to be with so he forever. Don't even worry about little sis. And then, so he gets to the ground floor in time to look up to the roof. Cause she's afraid. I presume that young un is going to kill herself like her sister did. But when she gets to the ground, nobody's there or, or nobody's up on the roof. Right. Do I have this she right? F- I think so. I think she flew away. Right. She went <laughs> using the magic of an MP3 player. <laughs> <laughs> the Zoom zoomed her away. It came with a free song from U2. And yeah, and we get some some flashbacks here. Because again, 30% of this movie is flashback. Where it's Eugen uh, kind of getting Sohi to join her social group. Where so he is sort of brushing Anju off. And we get that. There's a club scene with like oh. Eugen and So he yeah. and Un Young all making time with some guys at the club. This this club scene is raucous. I felt embarrassed watching it. I was like, oh my gosh, it's so hot. It's it's like the <laughs> club at the end of night shift with Michael Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> it's got kind of a weird jungle theme to it. Oh man! And then the hot dude, Kiho, the the yes. Oh, he's so slick in his freaking his uh, his sports coat and collar open, like the white cotton shirt open, like bringing drinks. Like, yo, I got your Shirley Temples. <laughs> I was gonna get you a virgin daiquiri, but then I thought, who are we kidding? Everyone's drinking root beer or something. <laughs> So yeah. adorable. Yeah, it's it's really strange. It's like they're all at the peach pit or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, only Emily Valentine went to the rave. She got the uh, the euphoria for Brandon. Sure. Well, you know that's because Brenda wasn't there to stop him. Nope. She slipped in the Mickey. Mm. Yeah, gross. And then, no, that's not that's not a butt thing. Oh, I mean, maybe it was a suppository. Yeah, it's a butt thing if you do the right search for it. <laughs> Google Plus, <laughs> uh, spankbang dot com. <laughs> so, meanwhile, Unju is on the roof uh, in this flashback. Like while so he and her new friends are out partying, Unju is on the roof of this chapel, just teasing us about when she's gonna jump. Uh, because that's the one thing we don't really know in this movie. We know she went off the roof. We just don't know when and why. And she's going through a bunch, bunch of texts that are from Sohi blowing her off. And then Sohi starts to make out with Gyo, the, you know, the guy at the peach pit in question. And it turns out, Richard, that it's Sohi who gets knocked up by Gyo. <gasps> Right? Twist. And there is this great scene where Gyo and his mom, his mom in particular, is just like, so he, you need to get an abortion and leave my son alone. And so he is like, Gyo, what about me? And he's like, sorry, I got to go home with mom. This lady, the mom, is such a weird character. She has that like faucet with her madness. Yes. Where when she's talking to her son on the phone, she's so cutesy mom voice. And as soon as she hangs up, her smile fades. And then she's just grimacing and kind of like mumbling to herself with this apoplectic rage. Like, and she really does it with her when she's trying to just like get the abortion, get the abortion. I'm yeah. here for you. I'm here. You're wasting my time so I can get rid of this baby. You're wasting my time. You're wasting my son's time. How about you oh, get rid man. of this kid and get out of our lives? Is oh, her move? Crap! It's it's brutal. And then so he goes to Anju, who by the way she has been shitting on this whole movie. And Anju is like, you know what's going to happen? This Gio guy's going to leave you. And he's going to leave you all alone, which just happened. And so he basically tells her, uh, tells Anju, you should pray for your own death. You're terrible. And it's. It's rough. The, this whole uh, mm-hmm. sequence is filled with a lot of emotions running high and people being real shitty to one another. Oh, yeah. And then maybe maybe my favorite scene in the movie happens. 
Which is so he on a swing set in the dark. This is like the scene, man. This is so cool. It's it's really it's just well shot. Anyway, she is swinging like as high as she can, and then you start to see Anju swinging beside her. But then when she looks over, she's gone. And then so he at a certain point just flies out at the apex of this arc of the swing and rolls onto her side holding her belly presumably she was basically trying to get rid of the baby by <laughs> taking a spill out of oh, the swing man. but uh, i love the way this the camera is seemingly mounted to the swing so they're the whole thing is so disorienting it's just like whipping you back and forth and it's amazing it, it's a gorgeous scene like it's shot beautifully it's creepy like there's something about swinging at night on a swing set that i think is inherently kind of creepy and it's really good but then we have another moment after this scene where so he is back at anju's desk where she's just getting you know run up one side and down the other by all the mean girls in the class and being told like you know you killed anju by taking the place of of uh the what Un Young in the group and that that was all just so that Yu Jin could make Anju depressed so that sh- the short haired girl wouldn't be the first in the class like it's all this elaborate scheme for Yu Jin to oh my like checkmate Anju and and make her depressed so that she won't study as well <laughs> or something <laughs> Anju then appears behind this girl after so he leaves and grabs her head and just starts gripping her face and staring at her with crazy bloodshot eyes from behind. And then when so he goes back into the classroom, nobody's there. This was one of those where I was like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, it's like she was just spirited off or spirited away. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, well, hey, we didn't know how to deal with this uh, this character conflict anymore, so... Ah, she's gone. Was she the? I mean, was she the one stuffed in the locker, or was that uh, yes. a, a dream she, sequence? I oh, think, that was her. Yes, I think she's the one who ends up being found in the locker later, <laughs> which is very cool. But it's again, it's just like so. Unju killed her just because she was talking smack about So He. I think. I, I think. think. So. Anyway, so mm-hmm. So He tries to go up to the roof, but it of course it's padlocked still. So she tries to bust out a window, which uh, causes her pledge hand to bleed. You know, the titular blood pledge hand. Ow, that was my pledge hand. That's my pledge hand. I do all my pledges with his hand. <laughs> I got five or six outstanding blood pledges. That would be amazing. There's like six or seven other groups of girls. <laughs> all, all with bandaged hands. Oh my when God. When are you going to tell our story, Mr. Filmmaker? <laughs> we had a blood pledge with So He Too. Except ours <laughs> wasn't about committing suicide. Ours was to go to Baskin Robbins and have a delightful time. <laughs> my parents took my phone. So I'm going to jump off the roof. <laughs> we had a blood pledge to see John Wick 3. He protects puppies. <laughs> I need to start having more blood pledges just for random stuff. <laughs> oh, hey, did you get my blood pledge? Oh, no, I, let me check. Oh, blood pledge. <laughs> I've got six in my inbox. <laughs> I got six in my slot. <laughs> I got a bunch of blood pledges in my slot. Oh, baby. The uh, Gio's mother, the one who was like, hey, I've got a blood pledge to get this girl an abortion. <laughs> <laughs> she She's out of the phone with her son, and she's like, don't worry, baby. I'm going to take care of everything. And this is pretty rocking. Uh, what is this? I love this part. It is. Yeah, it's pretty. Death by Bluetooth. <laughs> yeah. So her car just stops dead. She can't get out. And then she starts hearing this god awful sound through her Bluetooth receiver or whatever, her ears start bleeding and then her eyes start bleeding. And then we get a full on scanners explosion (laughs) and her head blows right the fuck off her neck. And then the car fucking reverses and leaves the whole movie. (laughs) 
fuck yeah it's just the plot backing out the subplot backing oh, out of the movie shit. it's pretty good i have no idea why that but that was that was something special right there oh <laughs> um, yeah it's great and then we we check in with un young the younger sister who hears some girls gossiping about the death and they ask her if she was in the classroom and like, hey, not the younger sister. I'm sorry. This is Un Young, the, uh, the short-haired girl in the trio of the Blood Pledge. And so they were, uh, they're asking her like, hey, what, what was going on? Were you guys fighting with Unju before she died? And she says, well, the truth is that so he and Unju were together on the roof and they were supposed to die together, but only Unju went through with it. This is all taking place in the bathroom. And as soon as Un Young opens up a bathroom stall, inside the bathroom stall, there's a bloody Unju in there, like like happens sometimes with a bathroom stall. Yep. Where you open it up and there's a bloody Unju. You knock first, always. Always. And all the other girls are like, what are you screaming about, you crazy broad? Uh, but she returns to class to tell So He, like, hey, I just saw Unju in the shitter. <laughs> is, which is exactly what the translation said <laughs> and then Onyoung screams again because she sees Unju at the window outside and a bunch of the girls rush over to see what you know hey was it a ghost so he then looks out the window and it's Unju's sister down below looking up at her also Onyoung pisses herself in this scene she pees on every square inch of the floor of this classroom. There's pee everywhere. <laughs> Down her leg, her sneakers, the whole deal. And oh, Lord. so he then just puts her head on the desk and it's just like, I am checking out. Uh, and Jung An, this is the little sister. She shows up to return the MP3 player back to So He. And while she's returning this MP3 player, Un Young grabs. Jung Un by the hair and says, Hey, you're Scooby doing me and pretending to be on Jew or some shit and trying to freak me out. And, and so he tries to pull the, the two girls apart. And then Eugene gets in on the action and is like, no, 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 no. This is all. So he's fault, not Un Young's. And then for no good reason, Jung Un just starts cutting her own hair. Oh man. <laughs> which I guess is a silent sort of protest. And so he stops her, but then Eugen repeats like, this is all so he's fault. And she tells, so he like, you need to tell her what happened on the roof. And then Eugen kicks uh, the sister out of class. But basically this is all moving towards. So he being the one that is going to take the fall for this, if it comes out, but Eugen then goes to find Un Young in the shower after she peed herself. And Un Young is like, Anju is back. And she's like, once you die, is her theory. Once you die, you know everything. You know everybody's secrets. And because Anju knows what was up, she is back to kill all of us. And Eugen says, you know what? You should come with me. I think I've got a perfect place for you. And then takes her to like some utility closet or something. And is like, don't worry. Unju won't find you in here along with everyone else. Oh man. And she says, you just stay here in the closet. I'm going to take care of things. So we leave Unyoung locked in this, you know, like utility closet. Eugen is on the loose. So he is in the classroom and this is where she sees uh, some hair coming out of uh, the locker and opens it up. And we see that mean girl from earlier crammed inside. Yeah. Don't but ever pull on the hair. Just l you see it run. The coolest thing about this though, is when she opens the door and the girls all crammed in there, her eye moves like yeah. she's still alive. It's like, Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> oh, that is creepy. And so then we find Eugen texting in class, like she's a, at some computer class or something. And her monitor goes out. And while Eugen is in this computer class, we cut between that and Eun Young, who is still in the closet, like upstairs in this school. 
and the door opens and Un Young is like, oh shit, this could be Unju trying to get in. And as she like creeps to the door to see who's outside the door, Unju gives her the dipsy doodle and comes at her from behind. <laughs> because she's a ghost. She can come from any direction, you know? And then Un Young screams, and then we cut back down to Yu Jin, who's in her computer class, and the lights are flickering, and then the power goes out. And just like every Whispering Corridors movie, as soon as the lights go out, everybody screams. Oh, man. <laughs> I was hoping for another full-on panic. Let's get the hell out of the school. Like, pull in the fire alarm. Let's, let's just all literally mass exit this freaking school. That would have been great. We yeah. almost had it. Almost, almost. Almost. But instead, what happens is we only Yu Jen's monitor is on, and she sees... Unju and Un Young in this closet, and Unju turns around at, like to face the monitor, or like you know, it, it's like a webcam or something where she is now d- looking directly at Yu Jin, presumably. And then arms come out of the monitor to grab towards Yu Jin, <laughs> which is pretty good. And she falls back, screams, and when the lights come up, she is just on the floor panting. But has not peed herself, sadly. <laughs> she is empty. She's got to store up some more. <laughs> she needs to drink more water. That's the lesson of, of uh, a blood pledge, really. She she needs to make a blood pledge to hydrate. <laughs> All of these are just hallucinations of a thirsty lady. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much soda. That stuff's got a lot of sodium in it. <laughs> All right, so Eugen, having seen, you know, the 3D movie of Unju coming at her, <laughs> turns up uh, in the closet to find Un Young gone. And f- where can Un Young be? The bathroom, maybe. And <laughs> sure enough, that's where she is. And she's like, hey, how did you get out of there? And Un Young is like, oh, Unju let me out. And also, I told Unju the truth about everything. And Eugene is like, you are crazy. You just pissed yourself in class. You Houdini'd your way out of a closet. But that doesn't mean that there are ghosts afoot. She is the, the real denier. She's, she's a real Unju truther in this movie. Unju is just a product of the chemtrails, man. Right. You get a, a whiff of chemtrails. The next thing you know, you got an Unju on your hands. But Un Young is like, look, if we tell the truth and we ask forgiveness, maybe Anju won't kill us. And Un Young then yanks Yu Chen's ankles, m- forcing her to fall, which causes her to hit her head and knocks her out. Which is a pretty good ex- move. I was expecting a big pool of blood to start. I was like, well, that took a turn, but then it didn't happen. And I right. was like, okay. Yeah, we're not done with Eugene yet, but we have her out of the picture for a moment. And so he runs to the chapel to bang on the door like Dustin Hoffman from The Graduate. And while she's banging on the door, that wakes Eugene up, who comes to in the bathroom. And then they converge to find Un Young on the roof, just staring into space, like on the, on the edge of the building. And so he is on the ground and is calling up to her while Eugene is on the roof behind her. And Eugene is like, you need to not nosedive off of this building. That's going to really raise some questions. And Un Young says, she's not scared to die. And I know that Anju is going to be with me. And also, don't know if you guys notice, but my but my old man keeps punching me around. And if I kill myself, I don't have to go back to that house. Yeah. And I think, is this where she talks about her previous attempt to kill herself too? That actually that- happens later, but yeah. Oh, like, okay. Cause yeah, she talk. that's where we get the flashback where she's got the jaw bandage. Oh, that's right. But yeah. So it turns out she has attempted suicide before because of the situation with her, her father. And 
she like looking completely serene stands on the the ledge of this roof looking back at Eugene and she says you know I feel really good and then she looks up into the sky and then falls backwards like she's doing the nesty plunge only into <laughs> cement oh my god <laughs> Uh, she thought she was a Chuck E. Cheese man landing the ball pit. That fall, I like, I made a, a, a gif of it because I loved it so much. This fall is outstanding. Yep, it's impressive, very impressive. I is it CGI? Is that how they did it? Do you think? I think CGI and a dummy, and they just went all out. Man, it is convincing. Like, because here's what does it is. When she falls and lands on the cement, because you see the fall from the top of the roof to the ground. And when she hits, there's this very subtle bounce. And, oh my god, man. It is one of my favorite falls I've ever seen in a movie. Yeah, it it reminded me of the one in uh, in uh, Cairo. Yeah, yeah. That is a good one too. Yeah, it's I, I'm telling you, I it was fucking unbelievable. I still I I want to know how they did it, but I also don't want to know <laughs> because part of me is just like, well, they just pushed a girl off the roof. <laughs> well, they did with the with with uh, with the other one was they had a, a stunt woman on a freaking uh, harness, and then they just dropped her, and then CGI'd at the bottom. But you know, before she hit, they stopped her, but. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why that one looks so crazy. It man, it it it's something else. I whatever stunt technology they are yeah. using, keep it the fuck up. Uh, so so he then just stands beside this body while cradling, you know, kind of holding her in her arms, and Eugen sees what's going down, and she's like, "Hi!" and then takes off. Later, yeah, she does not stick around for any questions. And so he, on the other hand, ends up in a classroom being questioned yet again uh, by authorities after someone has jumped off a roof. And but she does she she is completely stunned by this. She's just in shock. And Eugen is watching all this go down, kind of from hiding. And then she goes into the nun's office to look for the key. And while she's in the nun's office trying to find this master key that's where jong on the younger sister shows up and she's like looking for this and eugene is like where'd you get that fucking key and she says anju gave it to me and i know that all four of you were on the roof that night and eugene is like do you want to die like your fucking sister right and jong un says all i want to hear from you is the truth you give me the truth, and then we can talk about this. And Eugene gives her the truth in the form of braining her in the skull with this little statue. Oh, man. And knocks her out. And she says, Anju died instead of Sohi. That's the truth. Uh, which is like, huh? And so Eugene leaves the younger sister unconscious alone in the dark. And she, Eugen, then Eugen rather goes to the chapel where she gets the paper upon which the blood pledge was made and sets it on fire using candles surrounding the Virgin Mary, which is another very cool shot. And so she then finds, so he once more at Anju's desk and, uh, she's kind of playing, uh, so he for a little bit of a sucker here where she's like, look, I'm sorry I lied to you. How about we go to the chapel? We're going to ask for forgiveness from Anju and Unyang. And remember, this Anju that is haunting us, that's not the friend you remember. She's a ghost monster now. I'm your only friend. And so she suckers so he to go to the chapel. And... Once they're there, they're going to go in the confessional, which they do, but Eugen immediately jumps out of the confessional and locks Sohee in there, 
And then we kind of get the, the real plot. Yeah. Which is that she asked, so he to die because, so he took the first spot and stole the key from her. And now she's not going to be able to go to college. And we get the whole flashback of the plan being hatched by Eugene, who says, I'd rather die than not have first rank. And while she is complaining about, you know, not being top of the class and how she'd rather be dead, Oon Young is like, this is where she's like, oh, you know, I, I like where your head's at, but committing suicide isn't as easy as you think. Because I was going to do it last summer because of my dad. Uh, okay. But I was going to jump, but then I was too scared to do it. And then so he is like, oh, you know what? I'm all knocked up. I'd like to die too. And th- therein lies the the blood pledge. But she also reveals, like Eugen tells Un Young, hey, we're going to pretend to jump, but we're really not going to jump. And then so he's going to jump. I get my key back and I get to go to college. So th- this is the grand scheme of a blood pledge. But there's also the jealousy over the guy. Right. But that doesn't mm-hmm. reveal itself until like the last couple of minutes, which is oh, weird. Okay. Cause it's cause, well, here's the thing I'm testing you Thanks. because I have the order of this shit down pat. I just want to test your skills. I, I do what I can, <laughs> but yeah. So we, we go back to the chapel then where Eugene is just straight up choking. So he, and it's like, all these deaths are your fault. Like, Anju is your fault. Un Young is your fault. If you had just died when we wanted you to, this would all be cool. And you most certainly would not have been a ghost. So she drags her by a microphone cord. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> it is cool. It's like, she drags her and then there's a beam up above them and she tosses the microphone over the beam <laughs> And it hangs down in a real, like, let's get ready to strangle. (laughs) (laughs) All pretense of making it look like a suicide is, like, going out the fucking window at this point. Yeah, she just wants Sohee to fucking die. And she's starting to hoist her up, uh, Sohee, who is rising up off the ground. And then Eugene ties this microphone cable around a really nice roll-top desk. And Eugene is like, this is your destiny. This is what you were supposed to do. You were supposed to die. And now you're gonna. And then so he's legs slowly stop kicking. And then we see Anju's sister show up. And, <laughs> and she literally drops the mic. <laughs> and Eugene is like, hey, are you Anju? Or are you Jung on? And then... We we get like a lightning flash outside, and we see Anju's bloody face superimposed over Jung On, and uh, Eugene is like, "Look, look, look! I know you're all pissed off because you're a, a vengeance ghost and whatnot, but this is so he's fault. She tried to steal Giho from me, and that's what all this is about. It's really not about college. Apparently, <laughs> it's about this dude." And that's where so he is like, Anju, don't kill her, okay? It was my fault. I'm the one who who convinced you to go up on that roof. And as so he is trying to talk Anju out of murdering Yu Jin, this bloody hand comes out of the door yes. behind Yu Jin, and it's Un Young, man, who is also a ghost now. Oh, we got the freaking double team. I love it. Bloody <laughs> ghost teaming up. It's so good. Oh, the humanity. <laughs> We've got a ghost tag team. Oh, that can't be legal. <laughs> and Un <laughs> Young then like wraps this cord around Eugene's neck and then just disappears back out the door from when she came. And meanwhile, uh, Eugene is being just hiked up into the air by this mic cable. And then the coup de grace is Eugene, as she is, is strangling to death, 
looks down below her and sees between her feet, beneath her on the floor, the key that she was so desperate for. And she reaches for it and it's like, oh, this is a poignant moment where even in death she is still trying to get this key. And she gets it, Richard. Oh boy, does she get it. Yeah, this thing floats up and stabs her in the fucking neck. (laughs) And dead. Eugen, our awful girl, is now dead as Caesar's ghost. So so he screams, and then Anju comes close, uh, and you're like, well, is she going to kill Sohi now? And then we get our final flashback of the movie, where we realize that right before Sohi and Anju and all these girls went up to the roof to kill themselves... So he and Anju had reconciled that. So he told her she was pregnant and Anju was like, you can't die. There's got to be another way. But so he is, is like, I'm, I'm pretty fixated on this idea. I'm really, I really think suicide is the way to go. And Anju says, well, if you're going to die, then I'm going to die. Cause we're always going to be together. And in fact, leaves a message for her younger sister saying this, very thing. So he and I are going to be together forever. Uh, and then we see the blood pledge from the opening of the movie again. And except this time, when we get to the bang on the door, it turns out that that bang on the door is on Jew. And she says, I'm going to die, uh, with my friend. So he, so they all go up to the roof together with their glow sticks. Like it's a really sad rave. <laughs> Um, and then I think it's, it's so he and Unju who go up to the ledge first and then Eugene and Eun-young follow and Eugene is given Eun-young that look like, you know, wink, we're, <laughs> we're going to step off and, but they take each other's hands. And so, uh, Unju is on one far end. So she is holding, so he's hand who is holding you Jin's hand. And then Un young is on the other side. And that's only important because when it comes time to jump, they, uh, Un young and you Jin step back. And because so he is hanging on to you Jin, she doesn't fall, but she's hanging on to on who is hanging off the side of the building and her only grasp is on so he. And then she loses her grip and then Anju falls. So my read of it at least is that so he was going to go through with it and then ended up kind of getting fucked up because she was still hanging on to Eugen. Right. And then they go up to the roof. Uh, back in present day with all the murder and whatnot happening, they go up to the roof and then, so he it, like takes Anju's face in hand and apologizes. And then all of a sudden Anju looks normal. She doesn't have the bloody ghost face anymore. And then they hug and Anju says, you are so warm. And it's kind of a nice moment between these characters who you think have been, at odds the whole time. And then you get the reveal like, Oh no, actually they were, they were friends at the end when all this happened. And, uh, so he is going to go ahead and jump off. She's like, I'm doing it. I'm going to be with you. We're going to, I'm going to get rid of this baby. And Anju stops her and says, no, no, no. I need you to stay because I need you to be Jung Un's big sister from now on. And then, so he is like, okay, I won't, kill myself and I will stay here and, and serve as big sister to your little sister in your absence. And then Anju just floats off into the ether. She pieces out y'all. She does. In fact, then we get a little tag on the movie, Richard, because go, he player that he is, is making <laughs> some, some time with a new girl. Yep. And uh, it's like this short haired girl and we only see her from behind until they get in an elevator. And then the girl turns around 
and we get another flash, like a super info imposed face over hers. And it turns out it's Eugene come back to haunt the shit out of Gyo. Hey, cut the kid some slack. His mom died of Bluetooth explosion. <laughs> Got her head blown off her shoulders. <laughs> she blowed up real good. She certainly did. And uh, and that's it. That's Blood Pledge. A.K.A. A Blood Pledge Broken Promise. A.K.A. Yogo Godam 5. Dong Bon Ja Sal. And I love when you, do, when you do that. I love it. It's I have to do it fast. Otherwise, I'll overthink it. <laughs> Which is also how I do it. Yeah, it was also the uh, kind of the mantra of this movie. Yeah, I mean, this movie is like an hour 22 if you take credits out. And wow. yeah, it, I mean, it, it kind of trucks. That's the one thing I will say in on behalf of this movie. A, a couple of things. It's, it's nice and moody. It's atmospheric. There are uh, some good creepy moments like the girl in the locker and the swings and that fucking fall when Unyoung goes off uh, the building, which I is still one of my favorite things I've ever seen in a movie, I think. <laughs> but overall, I, the past couple or, you know, the, the last two entries in the whispering quarter series, it's definitely like, eh, we're kind of in the thinner waters yeah of, of this series uh which this movie taken on its own merits is fine it's sh- it just happens to be in a series of movies where the first three are fucking bangers yeah um which leads us richard first of all what was your overall impression how, how, how did you feel about blood pledge um i like the ending where it was as freaking complicated as a giallo with reveal upon reveal of what really happened um i really was a little burnt out on the flashbacks and we we're gonna do one more flashback to show you what really happened and i was like shit i wish we'd already done this uh some of the stuff some of it feels a little like filler um even at short running time i was got a little draggy a couple of the a couple of the atmospheric shots were a couple too many so you had a few too many look at the school again hey oh like you said earlier there was that beautiful shot and you're like oh there's something gonna happen and then boom nothing um and you can kind of tell it was a first time director doing his first uh you know feature length film but it wasn't bad at all it was just i don't know it, it I, the parts that make it awesome, like the ghosts teaming up and the swing scene and all that stuff, those are great moments. Uh, waiting for those got a little got a little antsy waiting for some of those moments. I I, I think we're both on the same page with that. That it's I I wish it had been a little bit a, a little bit more killer and a little less filler. Yeah, more dynamic would have been nice. And a, a DVD that didn't look too dark. I mean, maybe that was an intentional. It's a ghost movie. Turn the lights down. But man, this movie was way too dark. I had trouble with some some scenes knowing who was going to do what and what. But yeah. also what? <laughs> but also. Uh, <laughs> um, th- yes, there are moments as short as it is. You're right. There are moments where you're just like, eh, let's just get this going. But that being said, I still think like if someone were to say, like, should I see a blood pledge? It's like, man, yes, it is sub 90 minutes and there are definitely some moments in this i'll never forget that fall like that is burned into my brain now and they're and the girl in the locker given the like wink uh when (laughs) when (laughs) you open it up uh not since the guy jammed himself into a washing machine in uzumaki (laughs) has somebody uh you know condensed themselves uh so succinctly it, very determined very determined <laughs> yeah there's some good stuff it yeah but now richard this is where shit gets real oh snap um we we're gonna talk about the previous four movies all over again starting right now now actually i want to hear your if, if someone because some this happened recently somebody said if i'm watching the whispering corridor series do i need to watch them in order i was like no absolutely not they're thematically linked <laughs> 
but there is no reason to watch them in order unless you you just want to see them chronologically. Right. But I said, here is the order I would watch them in. And I'm curious Ooh. what your order would be. And I'll, I'll give you a second. I'll tell you what my order is. I would say you start with voice. Because that to me is like, eh, that's the one that's like, you j- just get through voice. There's some good stuff in it, but there's better stuff on the way. Then I think Blood Pledge kind of ratchets it up a notch because it's a little bit crazier. Then you watch the OG Whispering Corridors. Uh, and Because that's kind of the the baseline of like, okay, this is the the level of quality you can expect moving forward. Then you hit them with Memento Mori. Because that is not only a good movie, the end of that movie is the craziest shit you're ever going to see. Nice. Then you top it off with Wishing Stairs just because you, you watched the best one last. Yes, yes. Wishing Stairs is so fucking good, man. I know, dude. Uh, all right. Do, do you have an, an order in mind if you were going to lay it down for somebody? Yeah, I think I think I would definitely watch the first one first, keep that the same, and then get a voice and a blood pledge out of the way. Right. And then save Memento Mori and, of course... Just like you, that freaking wishing stairs, man, bust that out last. <laughs> wishing stairs is one of my favorites. I mean, not just in this series, but I just mean as far as like Memento Mori and Wishing Stairs both, I can kind of watch anytime. Yeah. And Wishing Stairs has that great sequence in the dance room at the end that is like. It reminded me, as I've thought back on it, it reminds me a little bit of uh, The Lady in White in oh, terms yeah. of just like like a classical kind of ghost, even though uh, the Wishing Sears ghost is totally going to fuck you up mm-hmm. uh, more so than The Lady in White. But there's something so like classical that that scene where you see the floating ghost in the dance room is, again, one of those things that's just burned into my brain now. And yeah, oh, it's good. And and the it, character work is so good in that for a five film series where you have so much time elapsing between each sequel, each, you know, sort of tenuously connected sequel, you, you did pretty good. You know, you, you even if you did do what we did and watched all five in a row, you'd make out OK. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, the, but I mean, obviously, the seams started to show with part four and they were just freaking torn on this one, but it's still, I think they're all worthwhile. There's no, there was no moment where it felt like we were being punished for coming this far. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was trying to think if there, if there's something like that in the Tomie series, and I don't think there is. I think Tomie is, is, I don't think Tomie has the highs of whispering corridors. No, you know, there's not like a wishing stairs or a, a, a memento mori or even a whispering corridor. Well, for for me, for me, it would be Tomie replay, but that's just me. I, that's I, my, look, that's my jam. I'm man. I I gotta say another face. Even though it's kind of the cheapy TV one, yeah. <laughs> that has some moments in it that I'm like, man, this is good Tomie. You made me like, I dismissed that one out of hand. I was like, nah, bleh. but you were like, no, we're doing this. And I was like, okay, yeah, it'll be funny. And I was like, wait a minute. He wasn't kidding. This is actually good. Yeah. I, I think revenge is the, is the low point of that. That whole series. Yeah. Re- it, revenge. Re- revenge is also one of my least favorite um, of the manga too. I, yes, I would agree. I think unlimited is fun and bonkers. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and actually in a weird way, closer to the Edo stuff, but also yeah. uh-huh. the fact that you've got like, you know, Noburo Iguchi and Yoshihiro Nishimura behind the camera for this thing. It just gets out of hand real fast. I think like, every sequel, no matter what it is, any ongoing series should have them do one of the movies just as a rule. <laughs> yes, we need them to do the sixth and final Whispering Corridors movie. Yes. Where it's just like lesbian ghosts turning into caterpillars and... 
the corridor is a giant vagina that chews and spits people out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm I'm always curious what those knuckleheads are up to. Like those guys seem like they are just having the time of their lives, no matter what movie they're making. And and every movie they make ain't for me. But right. good lord, does it seem like they're just like, you know what would be fucking crazy? <laughs> they're like they're like your college buddy that rolls into town and your wife is real unhappy about it you know where it's like oh shit you know when he shows up that there's going to be too much drunkenness and there is a better than zero chance that i'm going to have to bail somebody out there's going to be a a plane there's going to be like a, a a plane made of corpses flying over the house yes yes Yeah, like, that's the kind of shit, like, uh, Aguchi and Nishimura show up, somebody's taking skydiving lessons for the first time in their life. (laughs) 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 Like, Uh, their method of filmmaking is just, come on, man. And that's it. It'll be great if we have matching tattoos, brother. (laughs) I would, my God, would I get it? I don't have a tattoo on my body. (laughs) <laughs> but if if Nobara Gucci and Nishimura showed up on my doorstep and were like, we're getting a tattoo, I, <laughs> I would not question. Even in these pandemic times, I would go to a tattoo parlor with those two men to get myself a COVID tattoo. Oh, man. Look, this is the end of the road for Whispering Corridors, but I, I would wager to say it is not the end for us. Speak for yourself. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm going to jump off a roof with a glow stick. <laughs> I'm going to jump off a glow stick. Oh. Wait, what? That's Chernobyl porn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, anyway, we'll. I don't know what we're going to do next. We, we've discussed it a little bit in passing, but I haven't really settled on anything. Yeah. But we'll come up with something. I, I'm... There's part of me that's like, we should do Echo Echo Azrak, but... Uh, I have thought of that, too. I have thought of that, too. The the problem is that there's not, like, a great one of those. There's a lot of, yeah. like, eh, it's okay. There's cool parts in all of them. They're, yeah. They're, they're interesting to, to throw on, but not really pay a lot of attention to. Yes. So, uh, we'll, we're going to we're gonna think about it. Um, in the meantime, thanks for 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 joining me on our corridors journey through whispering and (laughs) oh and remember folks if you happen to pass a corridor tilt your head just right it might be whispering to you um richard where can people who should want to hear more non uh asian horror stuff from you go to do such a thing well since you ask over at legion podcasts and the button or little doom, doom, ding 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 dang called hello this is the doom show hello 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 this is the doom show yeah and uh click on that where should be episode 200 before my computer catches on fire yeah that's it, that's crazy that you have done 200 episodes of that show what's crazy is i've never ever had complete and utter software failure while editing an episode until episode 200 it's been great yeah it's always fun when uh something just horrifying happens it's it it couldn't have done this at like 132 well but if it had happened at 132 you it would have messed up on episode 199 oh shoot yeah yeah check us out where you know we're talking giallo movies and slashers and Sweaty Cameron some, Mitchell. <laughs> sweaty Cameron Mitchell. Some uncategorizable films that I don't know what. We've got some in the in the hoppa, in the in the bag, in the old juicy fruit gum wrapper that are just films I don't know. <sighs> Jeffrey picks something and then I accuse him of picking it and he tells me that I picked it and then I'm like, while while I have him on mute while he's talking. I mean, I you mute my microphone and I go and I look through our messenger to see who did it. Like, who's at fault for the American scream? <laughs> and I don't mean the documentary from the 2010s. I mean, the movie from 89 that no one saw 
and it's know, always I've me. Never heard of that. It's always oh, you're going to hear all about it. It's <laughs> it's so wonderful. But no, I picked it. I don't remember doing that. <laughs> so you yelled Jacques at my in the mirror at yeah. myself. <laughs> my little was... pocket mirror I keep. <laughs> um, if I may say, and I, I know I've I've been uh, I would say effusive in my adoration of Hello, this is the Doom Show. Um, I would just say I I love that show so much. It is because I feel like I've seen a lot of movies until I listen to Hello, this is the Doom Show, and then I'm like, I have no idea what this fucking movie is. <laughs> Which is great. Like, it, there are movies that I would, like, I watched without warning again not too long ago. Oh, man. And just wallowed in it. Uh, because of you mentioning, I think this was on your live live stream, which you've been doing some of, uh, that uh, you mentioned the hubba hubba. Uh, <laughs> with that yes. Ca- that Cameron Mitchell, <laughs> that's his way to, like, get somebody moving. Hubba hubba hubba. And he bangs on the side of a freaking, uh, oh, a freaking, uh, what do you call those? What are those tin boxes people RVs. go on vacation? Yeah, yeah, he bangs on the side of the RV, like, hubba bubba boy, let's hop to it. <laughs> it's, yeah, and when you said that, I was like, I got to go watch Without Warning again. I haven't seen that in forever, and I even forgot Cameron Mitchell was in it. Oh, uh, my God. And, uh, and, and the, like, two days after that, I sat down and watched Without Warning, and I was like, oh, my God, this movie. It is. It's something else, man. It really is. It's just, it, it's a real shitty predator before predator was ever a thing. And, and I've been, I've been wanting to watch uh, alone in the dark again, because that's like the sister film to me. Cause it's got, uh, the boys in it, the freaking uh, Oh my God. The sweat hogs, the Jack Palance and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Carter. <laughs> no, it's it's uh Jack Palance and uh what's his face? Or oh. both in Alone in the Dark. Shit. Uh uh played Bella Lugosi. Big mouth. Yeah. That's huge sexy mouth. Yeah. I can't I can't believe I Martin don't, Landau. Martin Landau, of course. We did it. Google did it. <laughs> yeah. Thank but you, that, Google. Oh my god. That movie too. That's that's weird, weird shit. My impression of Jack Palance can, comes entirely from without warning, <laughs> which is just say anything and then breathe creepily after. You know, yeah. like, oh, we've got to take care of that hunter. <sighs> My dad used to always quote the old skin bracer commercials where he'd like slap the freaking. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the aftershave on his face and go, ah, skin brace. Ah. <laughs> yeah. I, I always think of believe it or not. <laughs> God bless America. Oh, he's, he's a national treasure or w- would be if he were dead. Oh, he's alive. He's alive. I'm not taking that call. The, the, <laughs> the police have called. It is time to wrap up the show. <laughs> um, I, as always, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, well, thanks for, for having me here. back on, dude. And we will do this again with another set of movies as soon as we come up with a, a viable candidate. Uh, it, listeners, if you want to drop me a line and say, hey, you guys ought to do whatever movie. Um, not whatever movie, like name a movie. <laughs> If you're going to go to the trouble of emailing me, but you can do so at bo at legionpodcasts.com. Uh, I would also encourage you to check out the website, uh, legionpodcasts.com, uh, where you can find not only this show, but a bunch of others. And also, uh, there is a GoFundMe to help out some, some folks in our community that, uh, may need a little extra cash these days, uh, because of all the stuff going on with, uh, the coronavirus. Um, and we've actually been able to not only, uh, get a few hundred bucks in the bank there, but we've been able to like help people and that's, uh, that feels real good. So awesome. yeah. Uh, and in the meantime, um, we will be back, uh, sooner rather than later with another episode of hero hero go show. Uh, I, originally we were going to do a bit on the, uh, the I series and I'm actually holding mm-hmm. off on that a little bit because the arrow blu rays. Uh, got delayed some um, oh. for obvious reasons, but 
Uh, I want to investigate that series with uh, with the Blu-rays in hand. So in the meantime, I'll, I'll figure something else out, and, uh, and we'll talk to you real soon. So thanks for listening, everybody, and good night. Bye.